Um, welcome to my talk about extracting dependency data on scale with Renovate. And uh, to gawk the room, who is here for the extract dependency part? Okay, who is for here for the on scale? <laughs> okay, and who actually knows what Renovate is? Okay, half half, I see. Um, first, a little small introduction, who I am. Um, my name is Sebastian, I'm a SRE at N26, I uh, work as a freelancer, and these are some projects I'm involved in. Um, I'm a maintainer at Renovate, um, this is the top left here. I'm a member of Open Telemetry, and I'm a collaborator at Backstage, if this rings a bell. And because this is too boring, I've created another fork two weeks ago. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Let's hope I don't regret it. <laughs> um, but this brings me back to the actual topic. Dependencies are everywhere. And as a software engineer, you probably know about that. So you face this challenge every day. And when I'm talking about, OK, extracting dependency data, what kind of dependencies are we talking here about? Um, I'm talking mostly about stuff like this. You have your wonderful, nice little application, Python, maybe some PyProject Thomas stuff, maybe NPM packages, and you show it to your friends. So, hey, you know, it's a really nice application, but there's a trove and a cellar full of depth there. Like, we, we built this stuff on giants. And the problem is, you, we forget about these things. We forget that these dependencies are here and where to find them because somebody leaves the company and suddenly nobody knows it's even there until you run into a problem and you think about, okay, where is this coming from? <laughs> Why is it there? And where is it still also in the, in the organization? And this where it is also in the organization part is uh, where I have um, tackled this challenge because we had the same problem with N26 too. So here are some uh, examples of package manager data um, we have at N26. We have stuff like NPM packages with dependencies like commander, hopefully no lodash anymore. Now, now after we know where it has been. Um, PyProject, Thomas um, with PDM, with, with a lot of ranges, PDM stuff. But also stuff like CI tooling for GitHub runners. And we are talking not only about the actual GitHub actions here, like which should, by the way, definitely be pinned to hash. That's actually the security recommendation. But we're also talking about um, like on which platforms these things are running. Like, okay, is it the CI system running on Ubuntu 24, uh, uh, 2004? Or is it maybe already running on 2204? Or maybe even 16.04, so you should have updated this. But GitHub Actions are on that side actually pretty simple. <laughs> if you take a look at GitLab, it can, uh, can look like this. You have a Im default image with Ubuntu, which is a completely different versioning system. Then you have services defined for the build process globally, like here in that case Redis. Then you have a different um, images for specific jobs, which then have our own services. And then you have maybe stuff in the scripts too. And suddenly this challenge becomes a lot, lot bigger. Um, and we are talking um, and we are seeing today solutions about how to tackle these little nudges, which we have not, could not tackle with standard stuff so far. Um, other examples here are, <laughs> These uh, Docker files are such like this. We have here like a uh, node. Uh, we boil from a node image, we um, tag to a hash. We copy stuff from a, from a different image. We have um, uh, Debian packages. And then, at fi and finally, we download binaries from any kind of endpoint and then install it. Like, especially the last one, this would, no tooling in the world will find this for you. But people can, and with the help of, uh, of stuff like Renovate, we can all actually find this stuff then globally. But that's not all. Like, we have also infrastructure as a code. In the end, it's code. 
So and on the left hand side, we see, uh, for example, an Argo CD application, which has a reference to a GitHub repository, and then it also has a reference to a Helm chart. Or on the right hand side, we have a Terraform setup, like, okay, with a required provider, with, uh, with modules um, in different formats. And these are all stuff you would have to implement yourself. If you uh, develop any kind of extraction logic, you have to do this yourself. And um, in my experience at Renovate, it's basically like, if it's possible to do something differently, people will do it. <laughs> um, we will come later then to that. Um, but um, we, uh, most of our work um, basically revolves around reverse engineering logic from package managers. And then stuff like there comes up like, okay, the H1 uh, Go hashing algorithm works differently for zip files than for folders. And that's because of bug. And therefore we cannot have to re-implement these bugs in TypeScript and so we can update log files. But yeah, with all this being said, there were, I think log for shell is still a, a term. Um, and George Adams back then put it pretty, um, pretty good. Back then also um, um, the Korea, or lovely Korean um, gaming show was also on the, on the menu. And, <laughs> and a lot of big custom, uh, big companies had massive problems to find for where they use Log4j. But um, we have a pretty cool use case um, in, on the Renovate bot side where Swisscom actually made this pretty easy for them because they simply have kept their stuff up to date. So there was like, okay, five releases in a week. We don't care. We, we, we know how to do this because the, the, the system has been matured enough. But yeah, how to actually find this? So where can Renovate help in, in that context? Basically, for, the, for that people who don't know, are not aware of what Renovate is, um, it's basically like a, a CLI or a service um, which looks at the source code repositories, identifies dependencies, looks up the newest or uh, newer versions of it, and then update this in the files and propose a pull request. Um, Sounds like it's, it's really simple, but there's a lot of knobs and, uh, and uh, levers you can use there to change stuff. You can group, you can use um, auto merge, you can use uh, add uh, custom labels and such as uh, change commit bodies and so on. And this is why I've, not, I've used Renovate here because we have, uh, Renovate has over 100 managers supported right now. Um, we are talking here about stuff like, M you know, it on the right hand side is too small, but this, this is the point. Um, we are talking of stuff like Basil, we are talking about Argo CD, we are talking about Ansible, we are talking about niche stuff like Helm File. I know Helm File is not that, uh, that niche, but Helm's Man. Um, and stuff like, okay, maybe also tooling, like tool version, ASDF, um, that's everything in there. And why we have this, this system is because we accept contributions um, in contrast to other players on the market. Um, we live the open source mentality and if it's, the ecosystem is big enough and there's adoption of this, of this ecosystem, we will adopt the, the change. And this is why we drive um, pretty good adoption, for example, in open telemetry. We support there, for example, the open telemetry collector builder. That natively. So if you have stuff like you build your own custom distribution, Renovate will provide updates for you there. Um, we have 65 data sources. Um, under data sources, you can imagine stuff like uh, GitHub releases, GitLab releases, Artifactory, uh, Docker, uh, Im OCI image repositories, Git tags, Git refs, um, PyPy, NPM and so on. So basically we're talking about types of APIs. And this, all this thing is available for eight coding, code hosting platforms and this includes Bitbucket, GitHub, Common Enterprise, GitLab, uh, Gitea, Garrett and Derivates. 
But what is about my lovely internal dependency? Because the, this, this is... <laughs> the thing is, the bigger the company, the more there is the, the tendency to create custom abstractions. Like, okay, because the engineer has the, has the idea, I know better. <laughs> so they create, a, create an abstraction, but obviously if this is some kind of internal proprietary format, nobody knows about how to support that. Sorry? <laughs> Everywhere has the, has, are the same problems. But uh, Renovate has a solution for that. Uh, the two things um, there, custom managers, which actually you can define in, in the configuration um, to how to capture these, uh, these dependencies and what kind of dependency name this is, which, which is the package name, where to look it up, and actually what is the value of here. So basically, what we're doing here is, okay, this is a bullseye release from, the, uh, from, from Debian. And we install VGET in version 1.21-1. And therefore, um, with the, on the next slide, we will see it on the configuration. It will update this then in the pull request. Um, a similar principle we have done here with the TRUI version. We have tagged this with, okay, this is a GitHub release. And the repository we follow is Aqua Security slash Trivi. And this is with the conf following configuration is then enough to, uh, to update this dependency. And if you're self-host, or even if you're not self-host, there is a concept which is called presets, where you can share this um, globally in your organization. So um, you could define this once in your organization and it will work everywhere. This is, for example, why bigger companies like Google um, or SAP um, use this centrally because they can provide such stuff centrally and distribute it. Um, and this includes replacement like package migrations. Here, for example, we see, okay, we, we, uh, we take the Docker file, we, um, we, we match here this string um, with the data source and the current value. And this is enough for Renovate to know, okay, I have to replace this current value with the newest version, which I then get from the data source, um, which it captures here in this, uh, this other group. But you can, obviously you can um, hard code this too. Um, but all we have, what we have here done here is this uh, Debian reference, um, which uses match string strategy recursive. So basically what this does is it matches the first string, this defines the new scope, and then the second, um, a string is used to match a, additional um, dependencies. So you can basically um, reduce the scope from the whole file to a, to a subsection. So basically the first, the first um, regex captures this, uh, this part, and the second one matches then um, VGET uh, and CR certificates. Um, this, this leads me then to the Custom data sources, which is the bottom of the API side from the data manager, uh, from the data source side, which allows to use any kind of REST API um, to fetch release data. Uh, people use this, for example, to fetch Grafana dashboard updates. So they have in the values, uh, values YAML file, they have references to the dashboard ID and the um, revision and then use this custom data source to cap get to the Grafana API and fetch the newest release. Or another use case is the um, HashiCorp release API, where they provide enterprise versions, um, which is the current enterprise version and so on. But, okay, good enough. Okay, Ren uh, Renovate knows at that point um, how to get this data, how to extract it, but what about how you get you this, how you get this data? Because only um, you have to extract this data somehow. And there are three possibilities right now to do this. The simplest one is the simply included one, this, the, um, the so-called dependency dashboard. That's basically an issue which renovates opens, um, which gives you an overview about the complete repository. So there are stuff like on there like, 
detected vulnerabilities if you have this enabled, um, pull requests that are open, and also like the, de uh, the detected dependencies or if they are rate limited and so on. Um, this is also available on the Mend.io app. So this is the, basically the GitHub app you see um, on GitHub all the time. The problem is that is on big mono repos, there's a issue, uh, a character limit on the issues. And basically we dropped this at, uh, um, at, uh, at the first glance, we've reached this limit. Because in the end we want uh, rather to have these interactable um, elements showing up on the issue rather than only the detected dependencies. Which brings me to the second possibility, logs. So what Renovate does for debugging purposes, it writes logs out um, with the package files it would have updated and which uh, it would have which it has extracted. Um, these, but these are only visible um, if you run this on log level debug or you use um, a configuration option which is called log level remap, which is very helpful. Um, there you can basically define, okay, I won't have I want this message type to be now info level, for example, to, to surface this. Um, and it would be, uh, it's very helpful for you for passing if you then use this log format JSON option, because then you have nice little um, JSON objects you can then pass down and you basically can filter for the message package with updates. And this includes stuff like um, we will see then in the next option, which is the, my recommended one. Um, which is it's just the newest option of these three. Um, like the manager, the package files, all dependencies which have been extracted, um, depth types, which are subtypes of dependencies. This would be, for example, for NPM would be dev dependencies, optional dependencies, um, or overrides. Um, and it includes also the updates it has detected. So in that case, it would be, in case it's um, major, minor, and patches available, there would be like three objects there because it picks the, picks the highest one. Except you have um, configuration in there, and this is, this is a common theme. It, it depends because uh, Renovate is pretty much um, extremely configurable. So you can say, okay, don't go over this version. It's also possible. Like, this is a good example for this is um, we use that for uh, Terraform, for example, to not go over the um, Terraform version before the license, uh, after the license change. You can, so you can set this globally, and then it will never go over this glo um, on the whole setup and the whole organization. So, this brings me to the recommended option which I've teased, uh, reports. Um, but what are reports? Reports are basically what you've seen in the logs, plus something, uh, some more, in a single concise JSON file. Um, this includes like status of the branches and package file updates, um, but I will go into more detail after that. And what's really interesting for doing this on scale is, um, you can write this out, you can uh, write this to the logs on the info level automatically, or you can push this to an S3 bucket. So you can run this like in a bigger company to update your dependencies and you simply configure this globally to say, hey, push me this um, in this S3 bucket and then you can use whatever tool you want to analyze this data and uh, re uh, process this further. Um, this, uh, this should be um, then very helpful for, for you guys. Um, I personally, for my later projects, I show, um, will show after that, I've used the logging stuff but this is mostly like to be um, uh, flexible regarding the backend where, it, um, where this Renovate is running. So it can run in Kubernetes or it can run in Docker or a sub process and so on. So I hope this, I will, it will be bigger on the next, uh, next slide. But basically um, what, what this report breaks it down to repository which manager, this would be like NPM, Dockerfile, uh, uh, PP621, uh, Terraform provider, and so, uh, Terraform, and so on. The file where this, uh, this dependency is located, the actual dependencies, 
and depending on um, if you run this in dry run, um, um, also the updates. But this is a good point. Um, what is if you want only to extract this, but not actually uh, want to update these dependencies? So you don't want to have these pull requests on your GitHub or GitLab repo. Um, there's an option which is called dry run, which is actually used for testing, but we can use it for that too. Um, because if you enable the reports, it, uh, it will also be exported in dry run mode. Um, and there are three types of dry runs. There's extract, lookup, full, and, and if you leave it um, void or null, um, it will run normally, so it will do all this stuff with, with pull requests and so on. Extract will poorly run the extraction, so it will only run the managers, so you basically will see um, st um, will see st only stuff like this. The dependency, the file, um, package file version, which is basically like would be a chart, um, a YAML chart version, for example, and the current value. So this is, would be good enough, for example, to create S-bombs. Um, but this is not the interest, um, this would be, it's not all the interesting part because but what is, we probably also want to know, okay, what are the updates? And for that, we need to run it in lookup mode. Um, and this will give us the um, before mentioned uh, buckets with the major, non-major and patch. The, newest, uh, the new version, the new value, because a new version doesn't mean it be the, the same value. For example, it could be a new range. As so current value is the, also it could be the new updated range. Um, but new version is then the internal version renovate decided is the, uh, is the current one it should update to. And this includes release timestamps if the data source returns this. So you can also see, okay, what is actually my uh, version drift because you see down here you see what is the current version timestamp in that case it's 2023 uh, November 27th November of 2023 but the version it would update to is the 10th of um, September 2024 and we are looking here on the uh, newest open telemetry collector release and it also includes stuff like um, source URL and so on this is now the branches section. So what kind of updates Renovate would, uh, would execute um, if it would run in normal mode. And this uh, uh, includes um, the all upgrades, specific uh, updates would be, uh, would be done. And also includes, okay, open, uh, currently open PRs. This, is, uh, this could be interesting, for example, especially if you do this historically, okay, do people actually merge this stuff? And how fast? It could be used for Dora, uh, calculating Dora metrics, for example, for patch management. So, um, other helpful options which should be considered here are these four here. Uh, fork processing basically enables Renovate to uh, actually consider forks because uh, by default it, uh, it's, it ignores forks because why you should normally update forks on your side, they should be upgraded upstream. Um, the second one is require config. Um, this can, uh, can be set to optional or ignored in that context. Uh, optional means, okay, consider local repository configurations like regex managers um, before man as mentioned before or completely ignore whatever the people are doing in their repositories this could be the second part could be interesting when you do this from a security perspective like then you basically say okay whatever they do in the repository i don't care i want to have this data and the last option is force this is a little bit hidden in the documentation but um, force gives you the option to override anything which, which is in the repository. So basically, if the, if the user turns off specific dependency updates inside of, uh, of the repository, you can re-enable it um, with that option. And that way can get all data out of there. 
even if the user tries to hide specific stuff. Um, but how I can you use this today? Um, and I promise it, the, uh, the will, options will be so fast that you probably today will trigger some security alerts like I've done. Um, because when I, uh, when I use this stuff, I basically triggered security alerts because I cloned every repository. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first option, it's the, the fastest one you can use right now, is basically dependency management data. This is uh, a project from Jamie Tana. Um, he's now right now at Elastic. Um, and it uses, in the background, it uses Renovate, um, uh, Renovate data, dependabot data, and other data sources, like Adapt Staff to generate a SQLite database, a local one, to give you a, a local overview about your dependencies. Um, this includes, for example, um, vulnerabilities too. So if you want simply something ad hoc, you want to know, know it now, you can run this. Um, and now to the thing which, uh, which I've developed for, for N26 as an open source project. Um, it's a backstage plugin. Um, is backstage a term which you're aware? Yeah. It's a, yes, yeah, okay, good. Yeah. yeah, right, that one, yeah. So basically what this, uh, this backstage plugin does, it um, runs Renovate for you. So um, we use it basically like, okay, we take all the components which we have in the backstage catalog and use this as targets for, okay, we want to ha extract data from them. And, uh, and the plugin will do, um, extract all this data on a schedule. Um, but there, there's a demo after that. And you get all these raw reports you get via API or via UI, whatever you prefer. So you can directly look at it, schedule new runs, refresh the data. Um, and this is all stored in the backstage database. But it also uses, uh, uses all these facilities of back, which Backstage provides, like shared caches. So um, if you use Redis uh, in Backstage, um, Renovate will use this Redis cache to coordinate between nodes and to share the cache, for example, for HTTP calls and so on. And what this allows is you can basically run Renovate like in five nodes and it will run and um, coordinate between each node and run five different repositories at the same time. So we can horizontal scale this thing, um, which has been not, is not possible with the CLI at the moment. But run does this serially. Um, because this is uh, backstage, there's obviously there's a REST API to fetch all this data, to manage the data. And there is also a dependencies endpoint to get the dependency information directly. And um, what the, the there's also an entity uh, renovate page, which basically has monorepo support, and we use that to show, okay, this subpath of this repository is mapped to this catalog file, and we'll only show this uh, this subpath of the entity. So you know, if you have a monorepo, it will not show everything that renovate found, um, but it will only show the relevant data for the specific uh, component. Which brings me to the demo. So basically, what we will do is we will start backstage. Okay. Is this readable? Yeah, okay. So um, I've extracted here um, like five projects, also, well, two projects of mine. Uh, this first one is the Renovate Meetup, um, which is basically like an example repo I use with these demos. And this is the, because this is the root entity, it will show everything. But if I, would, if I go to the uh, sub-projects, it, for example, shows only the demos uh, which are relevant to the specific demos. So this is the last part I've mentioned before. But now to the dependency overview. Like you see here, I've run 
Uh, if we go down to the, to the reports, you see I've run this against the Renovate repository and also run this against the Backstage repository. And there are, like, there are 433, uh, 430 updates found for the Backstage repository. Uh, and 3,834 dependencies. And it runs this also against the Renovate repo and it's 326. Uh, I will not open the backstage one because it's probably will flood the UI. But I will open the Renovate one. Um, and there we see this raw um, report file I've showed before. Um, we see, okay, there are two Docker, file, um, uh, Docker files in there, one at dot dev container Docker file and one under uh, tools. Um, this has a uh, one dependency found. Uh, this is this is a from which is called final. And what we have here, we have four dependencies found. Um, yeah, the, this is the syntax tag of the Docker file. And then we have here the base image and so on and so on. But yeah. We are, but because this is boring and inefficient to search the dependencies of you, um, I cre um, this uh, dependency uh, list exists where you can click filters and then f um, f filter based on the repository. Like here, we take only the renovate one and then we pick a manager. Like we say, okay, we take only GitHub actions and then we get only the GitHub actions and see, okay, um, what ca how many we are actually using there. <laughs> it's quite a lot. And because um, we have latest uh, text in here, we see also, okay, hey, the, um, we get the warning, hey, this is an invalid version. And for the manager types uh, under us, we can click export, download a CSV. <laughs> and you can run this. Uh, against any repository, as long as you have access to it. Um, so, hmm, what what what, what do you do? Um, any example when uh, repositories you want to scan on GitHub? Kubernetes. I've tried it before. The problem is that, that there, are, there, are, there are files which are 100 MB big, and that my Git um, drops uh, fails there with a gRPC error. I actually tried this before because I thought this would come up. <laughs> Can you um, six star? Dash uh, the model. Okay, six star slash model transparency. Okay, well, let's. English transparency. Okay, yeah, let's take that one. So, demo gods, please help me. <laughs> so, you know that this is not staged. <laughs> so. Now we see we see already, like okay, it's um, it started. It runs renovate. Uh, it's finished, and we should have the dependencies now. Yeah, signal transparency. We want uh, every, and we have the dependencies. Uh, um, this is released. You can download this today from NPM. For, um, this is. Uh, How do you take it? It's from backend UI. I don't get what you're trying to say. To be honest, to, sorry. How do you take it to renovate? Uh, I mean, from backend. Ah, okay. Um, basically, um, there's an abstraction layer, an extension, a backstage extension point. Um, where you can choose how to run Renovate. Currently in that setup, it's basically a package which directly imports Renovate as a node module and then runs it. But there's also an option to run this as a sidecar. 
So then it triggered the uh, Docker run, basically, with, with remove, and then runs in, uh, in isolated. Yeah, um, this basically brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, this is how we uh, extract dependency data for N26. Um, like, we have like 44,000, I found, actively tracking. And with history, we are like 400,000 data sets right now. So um, you can also check, okay, who, uh, what is the current value? What was it like two weeks ago and so on? Yeah. You, you left Kubernetes here from the, coming from the Docker file. That's the version that's, you, you, it's marked as invalid value. Why? Um, because it has, not, uh, has no current value. It's basically say, okay, use Ubuntu. But it's it has not a version attached to it. It's if you go if you go to the file, it's simply from Ubuntu, but it has no version. So if there would be like double double point twenty twenty two point oh four, it will show up as a current value. And then you do uh, you do transient dependency after that? No, no, only direct uh, dependencies. Okay. But but you can use for example depths.dev to actually look up these files and then get you get the full blown dependency tree. But one step after another. <laughs> do you also see some false positives or it's... What do you mean with false positives? Does that, um, that you found dependencies which are not there? Or, um, not really because um, if you would see that, then we also would renovate would also fail too. And it's quite actively used. So if something fails, we know in, a, in like 10 minutes or so, because we release on every commit, and there are people who auto-updates a lot. <laughs> General. Uh, exceptions are, are like NPM, because they directly pass the log files. Outside of that, we use only like the package files, and then use the binaries of the specific package managers to update the log files. For example, this is the case for PDM, where we, we update, in Renovate, we update the um, PyProject Tomo file, and then simply run PDM update um, to, to generate the log file. The reasoning is because there, if we would support 100 different package managers, which limit the, the log files of it, it would be even a greater mess, to be honest, because they consider this not public API, so they changed it on a whim. I'm a maintainer in the Trenovate, yes. So it's because the last bit I had the impression that the Renovate project is only for men, but it's, you're not meant. Right? No, I'm not meant. Um, the, the trademark rights are at meant, um, and, but it's HGPLv3, so you can fork it any day. And the, no, only a limited number of maintainers are um, part of meant, actually. So the, uh, the biggest um, users, I'm aware at least, of, of Renovate are uh, using um, the app or use the community edition or even only the CLI, so the purely open source part. Um, there was a question before that. So, uh, Um, like, what, how is our compliance team like to name it? Like, we are a bank. <laughs> um, so there's a very process heavy uh, things involved here. Yeah, okay, yeah, so you, you know the pain, so to, so to say. Um, obviously, we're trying right now to get the compliance clearance for stuff like auto merge, but this is not here yet. So um, we all hope that this will come soonish, at least for dev dependencies and stuff like that. But uh, let's see. Um, in case of Renovate bot uh, itself, we auto merge everything. Like if there's a, a something coming out and the CI passes, because we have uh, nearly 100% code coverage there, we auto merge. Mm -hmm. And as because we commit on every release, we can basically pinpoint directly to the package update which fails. Um, there is maybe an interesting feature if you use. Uh, it's not. Talk is actually not 
fully about renovate, but and to, what I didn't want to make some uh, advertising. But if you use uh, the Renovate app, you get stuff like this here, like merge confidence. It basically uses the CI results of all public repo, uh, repos, which use the also the Renovate app, and cal calculates the confidence level out of that. So if like 90,000 repositories merge this without problems and never roll back, you can say auto merge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it's fishy, but I say the option is there. You get the information at least. Um, yeah, there's that. Yeah, it's it's an option. Nobody forces you to do it. You, um, this is basically the, the principle of renovate. You are we uh, adapt to your process. You can configure us as as you want. So if you look at the uh, renovate docs page for the configuration uh, on the repository level, for example, these are all configuration options you have, <laughs> and you can basically fine tune it to whatever you need. And if that's not enough, you can fork it. Which do people actually do? Like GitLab does this, for example. So the, there was another question. Yeah, uh, does it have any limitation to for the source code from the users? Beyond the optimization, the ops, the ops, the ops. Uh, Azure DevOps is supported. Yes, it's supported. It's supported. Yeah. We we can. Basically, the, the supported platforms are um, uh, shown here. Like, these are the supported platforms. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. So, there's even AWS code commit still on there, even they deprecated it. <laughs> um, the, sorry, the, the person behind you was first. <laughs> yes, it's right now. You can download it. But I consider it um, experimental in the sense that I will break also compo web components <laughs> because I'm not a front end developer and I'm learning too here. <laughs> do you uh, work with the that are I use core components as much as possible, but the dependency table you've seen there um, is not part of the core components of Backstage um, because I run into limitations how to implement server side pagination. Um, I try to follow as much as possible the upstream standards, but it's not always possible, sadly. Yep. Um, so basically, you focus on one repository with different widgets. Yeah. What happens if a dependency is added and removed? Do you track that? Basically, if you keep the history, you will see this in the, in the reports. You have to diff the report. Um, I will, at the, that moment, I will not do the, show this on for, your, uh, for you and the UI. But you can simply go in there and say, okay, is this uh, this dependency in the new report um, and uh, uh, or not? Yes. No, um, um, it will um, it will show up so and that. Ah, okay. So if it's basically part of the uh, of the uh, production artifact, so no, um, it basically only wor um, works on the source code basis. If it's in the source code basis somewhere, um, it will find it. Thank you. You're welcome. So yeah. Oh, sorry. So how, how does Renovate know when an upstream request is taking? Uh, I mean, do you call the upstream? Yes. No, there's not. We actively look, um, up, um, request from the registries. So all these like millions of like thousands of dependencies, you do like round robin look for them. Yes, we are very big request. And, um, but if, for example, in the case of the Renovate app, there's all a single cache, at least for the public stuff. So if repo X looks for the same dependency in a time frame, um, our usual TTL for the cache is 30 minutes. It will not go again to Docker Hub, for example. So this, basically, the bigger the, the, the setup is, the more efficient it gets. <laughs> well, um, it, if there's for one package, there's an, a request in the, in the, for the whole 
renovate setup. We, we got no complaints. If the thing is, we um, we got complaints at the beginning, but we have so much caching right now in there um, that if if any kind of caching logic um, breaks for us, people can reach out to us because yeah, then the, this stuff happens that. And that we are flooding um, uh, registries, especially if uh, for self-hosted people, because the, we, commit, uh, we release on each commit, and um, so peop as people automatically update, um, the self-hosted instances are most of the time the first to hit this, uh, this, um, these APIs with the broken caching logic, even before we update the, the Renovate app, which is the biggest instance um, we are aware of. So this gives us time to basically fix it before before it actually reaches the bigger ecosystem. Yeah. You can um, define base branches, yes. So um, this is a common pattern that we see that, for example, um, you use a developer branch and you, want, and you have release branches. This is, for example, how Angular uses us. They define uh, dynamically, actually. And they define uh, dynamically their release branches and the maintenance branches. And Renovate provides then upgrades for each branch. I like that you were liking it. <laughs> Did you ever have, uh, had a request to include the package URL inside the main No. I've, I've uh, heard the, uh, yesterday the first time about it, to be honest. Really? Yes. Um, while um, sitting in the, um, in the speaker lounge, yeah. and somebody saw my t shirt and said, hey, do you know about package URL? So, no. What, what do you mean? <laughs> I first understood per, like P E R, and then not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you can generate out of the existing data already this, as, at least as how it has been explained to me so far. Because, so don't take this as a definite answer, because I've not looked into this. It's a common identifier that you can even use in the, even the differences like packages. Uh, like for example, if you have Debian version of the same packages, yeah. you can have this uh, common string for everything. So it's, it's becoming kind of default uh, for the identif identifiers uh, software package. Yeah. If I understand yesterday the explanation correctly, this data should be enough to identify, create this, generate this URL. So you have the data source, which would go in that case. You have the package name um, and you have the current version. But yeah. I'm, as I am said, I'm not sure if I'm missing anything because I'm not look, looked into that. What's this, uh, something missing like in the organization and In that, yeah, we can discuss this later, but basically, in case of Go, at least right now here, you would uh, see this if it would be a different host. And this stuff like this also includes registry URLs. So if you have use a artifactory, it will show up as, the, uh, as your artifactory.example.com, like that this index uh, actually, this registry is used. <laughs> There have been requests for S bombs, but we denied them so far because we want to keep the project focused. Um, but there are ways to uh, to work around this. Because, as I said, you can basically. I think there is a project which is called Renovate to S bomb, which already does pretty much that. Uh, but I'm not. I've never used it, so I'm not sure how the quality of that project is, which uses the log files. So uh, it uses the log, the JSON logs, to then generate S bombs from it. And with reports, it should be even easier, actually. Yeah. Um, 
There were also discussions to include open rewrites and stuff like that, but this is stuff you can actually do already today with post upgrade tasks. So where you can run arbitrary commands um, after your upgrade. Like uh, there are, for example, post update options like uh, ddupe. They do, do duplicate um, uh, package references in the log file. Yarn ddupe dash dash strategy highest and so on. I'm here for the crazy people. That's why I come to the conferences. Thanks.